Hello wonderful people and welcome to a very special episode of Rock Stories. Well actually they're all very special but this one is equally special to all the other special ones that we've done. It's about the history of Mindat. Now I've talked a lot about the history of Mindat before. In fact we have written articles about it. Here is one of the articles on Mindat about the history of Mindat called the history of Mindat. Um, it's in the menu called about and then there's a menu section on about called the history of Mindat so you can probably find it so if you're one of those people who really doesn't like videos then stop it right now and go and click that article and read it and then you don't have to listen to me talking about it but if you do that you'll be missing out on something because for your entertainment and nothing to do with me enjoying it or being a super nerd nothing at all to do with that purely for your enjoyment I have resurrected the old code and got it working and I want to show you it running. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. First of all, the beginning, the very beginning started, scroll, 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 click with this. When I was probably about six years old on a family holiday in Cornwall with my parents, and my sister who hated the fact that I loved rocks, but that's another thing altogether. I picked up this stone on the beach in Tintagel and it had a crystal in it. And I went to my dad and said, what's this? And he said, it's a quartz crystal. I was hooked. And yes, we can rotate this. Look at that. That's one of these neat things in Mindat. So I should do a video all about that at some point, but I'll probably forget. Um, you can even zoom in and anyway, I'm getting sidetracked by my own stuff. This rock was what started my passion in minerals and directly led to Mindat. There's another little anecdote about this specimen as well, which was when we were doing photographs of it a few years ago, um, we looked at it and we saw these little black dots dotted around and we looked at them more closely and da -da 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 -da, beautiful little anatase crystals. So my first specimen picked up on a beach um, as a six-year-old contained anatase crystals. I went back there I tried to find more anatase crystals a couple of years ago and I couldn't. Anyway that was just good luck. Anyway let's get back to the story. Back to the story I said. Hello go back. Oh, I hate the internet sometimes. Anyway Back to the story, yes. So, 1993, Christmas Day. I was bored. I was really bored. I was so bored I thought I'd write a mineral database. Now, I tried to look into this because I wanted to build a mineral database. Um, one of the reasons was I just got a very big book um, called Hayes Mineral Index, um, and I thought it'd be really good to have all of that information organized in a way I could search it properly um, and being the sort of person I was I looked into doing uh, a database in something like um, uh, Ball and Paradox um, and or Microsoft Access which probably was out at that time I'm trying to think about it now maybe not um, and it didn't work they, they couldn't display a chemical formula properly and I was a kind of a bit frustrated about that because I wanted to do it properly well there's a there's a limit to what you can do but so I built a DOS application and here it is or at least a screenshot of it working in uh, Windows XP or, or whatever uh, DOS box um, and it was um, okay I suppose it worked uh, and I got around the formula thing simply by putting the numbers, uh, the subscript numbers on the line below and it kind of worked. Anyway, you don't want to see that. You want to see it running for real. So I broke out the emulator and I got some old MS-DOS 6.2 discs and then I did this. And we're starting MS-DOS for the first time since well, the mid-1990s. 
and this is what we get. So let's see if we can remember how to use MS-DOS. Duh, yes, right. Okay, so let's go to the Mindat directory. That's probably a good place to start. And um, here we go. Right, so um, before we go and have a look at the main program, um, what I want to show you very quickly is the data files, how we stored information back in those days. So we've got all these .mdt files here, alphabetically A to Z. Um, so let's have a look at one of those. Um, no, it's edit, isn't it? Let's do edit. Um, mmins.mdt, for example. And here we go. So as you can see, the data format here is quite simple. It's a flat system, uh, a flat file system with first character of the line explaining what that particular line is. Um, an at indicates a new mineral line. Uh, a hash is a, a parameter. And then the backslash um, is a formula and forward slash are data values. Um, but yeah, the formula structure there is exactly the same as we have it now. So 1993 to today, we have the same essential coding for creating chemical formula on Mindat with this um, hat in front of the um, subsequent values. Um, uh, but as you can see, most of the minerals here they have very little information about them. Uh, in most cases, just a single locality. Um, scrolling down, have a look at this. See, like Macphersonite there, only one locality, which is vaguely lead hills. Anyway, let's get out of this and um, I'll show you very quickly, again, putting off the, the big event with these uh, distractions, the source code. So this is the source code, Mindat, the multi-purpose mineral database. That's quite a good line. I should probably reuse that. Uh, portable ANSI C code, which means it should be able to recompile easily on any system. Well, at least any system of 1994. Um, I tried to get this recompiling and it failed. Um, and I'll probably figure out why at some point, but today's not going to be that day because I don't have the time. Uh, and this is C programming, which was um, quite tedious compared to modern programming. There's lots of sort of definitions and all sorts of things you had to do in advance to get things working. Um, but actually a lot of it is very similar to the PHP programming that we do today, um, albeit the PHP is a little bit simplified compared to this. Anyway, enough of that, because I know what you want to see. You want to see it running. Now, Mindat v0.80 text interface. Pre-release test version only. Type help for information commands. Yeah, I know I shouldn't probably read out everything that you can see on the screen. That's a terrible habit, but let's get on with it. So here is the list of commands. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, because I tried it and it doesn't work, that I can't share information on the mineral. This show command doesn't work. It just crashes. And that's something to do with the fact that either due to the age of the program and the fact that I can't recompile it, or the um, uh, potentially the data files that I have may be out of date, or may, well not, may be too new for this version of the program. So I may not have the right combination of data files and application for it to work properly. Anyway, when I try and show a mineral, it crashes. So that's not very exciting. However, we can do some of the other commands, like if we do list chalk star, this gives us a database, in our database, all the minerals starting with chalk. Um, and we can't actually see anything about them, but you trust me, you should. You used to be able to view that data that we saw in the data file. So you go to it and just show you the chemical of index mineral, the formula, and the way that it showed the formula is that the um, the subscript numbers would be showed shown on the line below. So it was a little bit hideous, but it was the only way you could do it on a text-only system, and much better than having a formula in a single line, which is what you had to do with normal traditional databases at the time. Um, but the locks work, so if you do lock um, sumeb, for example, 
Then we get the list of minerals that were found at that were record, reported by Mindet at the time from the Sumith mine. And as you can see, it's not that many compared to today. Obviously, you know, this was adding in things um, entry by entry, and there was no major list. At the time, I also didn't have all of the historical journals. I didn't have things like the, the Sumeb issue from Mineralogical Record at the time. So um, I was very limited in what I could add in on this. Um, we could try another one, Gorland, because English localities I tended to do a bit better with because I, obviously I had the references and I had more of a passion for them. You see there, um, Cerulite, the uh, weird character, is um, because it can't display the, the content properly. That might have something to do, by the way, with why the other code is crashing. I think it's something to do with these data files. but. Um, yeah, uh, but if we show a region here, I'll show you the problem. Lock Wales. Because this system had only, you could only use 64 um, kilobytes of memory. Was it megabytes? No, kilobytes. 64 kilobytes of memory at a time in this paging. Um, you had, um, because of this horrible 8-bit um, architecture, that the uh, Intel chips were based on um, with DOS. Um, you couldn't do much in the application in terms of sorting. Um, so the sorting never worked. Uh, so all of the, these localities, they're just listed by mineral name, which is a bit pointless really, because it means that you've got, um, you have to look through all of these things, go back, you can't see like Hendry Quarry, you can't see all of the minerals in one group you just have to go through uh, anyway you see it's a, it's a it's a chaotic mess but that was the best we could do at the time um, <coughs> and that's all of Wales so that's basically Mindat albeit with bits missing from 1995 and fortunately for me at least this was abandoned at that point and I went on to uh, producing a version that was designed for the brand new at the time Windows 95 and that is an entirely different program and I've also got that working so do you want to see that yeah of course you do hold on tight and here we have Windows NT4 so let's uh, log in Welcome to Windows NT. Now, this brings back lots of memories. Go to my computer, open up the C drive, and we have Mindat 32. This was the first true 32 bit version of Mindat, and the first version of Mindat that was a windowed application. So, here we go. So there was released a shareware, which was the thing at the time where you released a piece of software for free and you hoped that people would send you some money or whatever for, uh, for doing it. And a few people did, but uh, it wasn't very well distributed. So this is the version as it was of 1996. Okay, tip of the day. Did you know? Ba, 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 ba. Close that. And I don't know if you can see it, but the icon in the corner here is our Mindat logo. Um, the um, capitalization of Mindat here is exactly how we hate it now. Um, we always keep Mindat in lower case, except when it's the start of a sentence. Um, let's make this bigger. And what have we got here? Welcome to Mindat 32. Mindat 32 is an electronic mineral encyclopedia designed exclusively for Windows 95 and Windows NT4. And it evolved out of my own needs for a computer program that would not only tell me information on minerals, but would include a fairly useful and comprehensive cross-reference index of worldwide localities for these minerals. Yeah. 
contains information on well over 6,000 minerals, synonyms, varieties, obsolete names, mixtures, discredited minerals, etc. Now that's not too bad considering I did that all myself. No one else helped with that entry. All of those were entered by my four fingers. Um, 11,000 mineral occurrences worldwide. Again, all done by me. Um, and so this is the first public release. Um, and note, about, note that the database is far from complete. Well, here we are. 2022 is still far from complete. It's a lot better than it was, though, of course. Right, okay, so quick start, how to use it. Okay, here we can start. What do you want to do first? Let's look at the toolbar at the top of the screen. Yes, isn't it ugly? Okay, the first button is a quick mineral scan. Now let's see if this crashes. Press that, type a mineral name, press enter. Okay, right, let's type a mineral name. What's our favorite mineral today gonna be? Rombo Clays. Just the first one I've thought of. Way! Rombo Clays. Oh, that's not a lot of information, is it? It's not that exciting. Formula. Chemical Index of Minerals Index, um, which was the book which um, is not really that important now. Um, and two localities, count them Clara Mine and Bisbee. All right, let's try something else. It's got to be more for, I don't know, quartz. Oh, yes. So formula, hardness, specific gravity, blah, 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 blah. Polymorphs, varieties, localities. Well, we've actually got a few localities and some descriptions. Um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I'm just curious because I can't remember any of this. What happens? Do we have to copy and paste a thing here or can you double click it? Oh, you can double click it. Oh, that's good. So they're, they're links, they're hyperlinks already. So as you can see, this is the proto Mindat. Um, and it's, it's obviously a lot more primitive than what we've got today. But you can see the concept is there. Um, all right, let's explore. Let's go to localities. Enter a locality lane. Um, let's try Yukon and see what we get. Now, finally, the locality search here is actually listing things properly so that you're getting the sub localities with the mineral list underneath. Now, it's interesting, we don't have this sort of view in Mindat anymore, um, mostly because the pages would just be ridiculously big, um, where you have the uh, the sub locality and all the minerals listed underneath it it's quite nice and compact but i don't think it's very practical with mindat as it is today i don't know maybe maybe you think differently maybe we maybe we do need it anyway that's the locality um, um search which is quite well it's not a search it's just locality, a quick search localities it says um and i don't think those are clickable no okay are these names here clickable? Yeah, those are clickable. All right, so what have we got here? Next, this, this item here uh, is export the active document to disk. Um, print the active. Now, there's something else we don't have. We've, we've given up on on Mindat. Is there's we've had absolutely zero interest in configuring Mindat to print things out, um, and part of the reason for that is um, that it's quite a pain to do um, because you have to set up separate style sheets you have to set up everything so that the formatting is correct for a printer um, but also I don't think we want to really encourage printing stuff on paper um, it's not that sort of environmentally friendly these days displays print preview okay well that's all that cut copy and paste I'm assuming that if we select something no that doesn't work oh well it doesn't matter it's not like I'm going to fix anything, is it? Um, find. What does find do? Oh, well, that's just the standard find in the page. That's a bit boring. Okay, now these ugly icons, they must be something that I've done. Mineral index. Oh, let's click that. Oh, oh, I remember this. Yes. So this is when I was showing off that I could do all of these 
fancy um, Windows MFC controls in an application. I mean, to the end of the day, this was also an excuse for me to teach myself how to do um, Windows MFC programming, um, which then I never really did much else on. Um, okay, so minerals. Select which range to show in the list below. Okay, so it doesn't can't give you the whole list at once because there's too many. So even then, we have problems of lists being too long. But at least it was more manageable then than it is now. And then you could select a list. Whoa, look at that. So that's a way, basically an alphabetical list, albeit broken down in sections. All right, let's go to same like the same localities. Enter locality report search text. Oh, this looks fun. Right, let's try England. We're going to be brave. Build list. Now we have here a hierarchical tree. Um, even though it's kind of a bit messed up. It thinks Devon is a country, but that's probably just a data entry issue. Uh, and Okay, so I don't think that there um, did what I wanted it to do. I should have put that in the enter part of locality name field. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. So this is basically the hierarchy of all localities. Uh, imagine how long it would take to build that on Mindat now. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look at Mexico. Oh, it's all confused, isn't it? Um, you see... A lot of cases we didn't really have a lot of good information um, and sideuretic meteorite of balsam de mapimi um, can I double click that nope that's just gone to the whole list of everything which is not very useful um, so let's get rid of that let's try Cornwall Build list. England. Okay, so there's Cornwall, USA as well, of course. Um, and then here is our list. Now, obviously, I was somewhat biased towards UK localities when I was building it back in the 90s, and particularly to Cornish localities, which were my favourites. Um, so um, there's probably a bunch of localities in here. Um, Atlanta Dan Quarry. But. Um, no, it doesn't seem to be a way of going to the locality from there, so that's all a bit weird. What's this? Search by properties. Oh, this looks like something that's never finished. Articles. Oh, look at this. So, Vindat32 technical information. That looks quite good. But I hope you like Mindat. It's my first attempt at programming for Windows. Yeah, almost my last. It was developed from the DOS version of Mindat, which wasn't widely released as is, and is no longer supported. It wasn't even supported in 95. Okay, it's not surprising it's not working now. Which again was my first attempt at DOS programming and again was my last. Uh, the original DOS version was written with an old copy of Borland CV 2.0. Ah, that's useful. Maybe I can get that and recompile it. Mindat32 was written using Microsoft Visual C++ up to version 4.1 now. I don't know what it is now. I don't really care. Um, the code was initially developed on my Compaq Aero 433 laptop, a 486SX, 33 MHz CPU, uh, 12 megabytes of RAM, 170 megabyte hard disk, plus an external massive 600 megabyte SCSI hard disk and CD-ROM running Windows 95. I'm now running a Pentium P75 system. I'll get something faster when I get some registration money, though. Yeah, well, that never happened. With 48 megabytes of memory running beta 2 of Windows NT4. See, Windows NT4 wasn't even officially released when I did this. That was interesting. Um, articles were written using WordPad. Images are processed using Photogenics on the Amiga and Paint Shop Pro on the PC. Photogenics on the Amiga is a graphics package which I was the lead programmer on. Um, and... Um, it was really quite good but that's not really the subject of this video um, but yeah that's interesting the P75 system I remember that I built it out of bits and I was able to overclock that system eventually to um, a P90 and um, I managed to get it up I think to 96 mega RAM uh, at some point um, anyway um, 
and actually there's another good story about that I could clock it to to a hundred megahertz um, but I had to leave the top off because it would overheat so quickly um, and when I left it with the top lid off uh, running it um, it created so much interference at the 100 megahertz band uh, that the two ladies who were living in the flat above me um, who liked to listen to KISS 100 FM uh, complained that it was uh, jamming their radio. Anyway, let's get back to what we were doing which was looking at articles, wasn't it? Things to do. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> this is a list of immediate things I'm working on for the next update of Mindat32. Faster locality searches. It's pretty poor at the moment. Um, the indexing and search code for localities has changed little since the old DOS version I did back in 1993. Now I, long, now I no longer have 64k butter buffer limits. I'm free to, free to write something a little faster. Oh god, yeah. Writing stuff on DOS was a nightmare. And I went to it from writing stuff on the Amiga, where she was a proper you know, 1632-bit um, architecture. Um, where you didn't have any of these issues, and then with DOS, bleh. the drawback will be it may make it la make largish two to three megabytes index files on disk. JPEG decoder, um, working on that already for the CD-ROM edition. If I find a suitable OCX, I can slot in. It would make my life easier. But I've had experience supporting JPEG code to other systems parts. So I'm not expecting it to be too difficult. Uh, it's interesting that you couldn't just display a JPEG as standard in the operating system in an application you know that was not easy um, so you could display Windows bitmaps which were uncompressed images but not JPEGs um, and the CD-ROM edition that never happened um, search engine the search engine page is not implemented at the moment okay phonetic name matching um, and that's something we're still not really that great on Mindat um, options page this really ought to do something I guess Locality browser regions. Again, I really should implement these. Automatic highlight indication. So tricky is this one. It should be hard to make sense of minimal names of spaces in. I may have to just forget those. Yeah, so we didn't try clicking on a minimal name with a space in it. Um, so it sounds like that probably didn't work. Uh, HTML expert. This is a longer term goal. I'd like to be able to export HTML from Mindat32 and then eventually it could be possible to convert Mindat32 into a web server so it could be run on a PC connected to the internet allowing anyone with a web browser or an internet account access to the latest mineral information and possibly write access and add information to a global database. That would be great. Dun, dun, dun. This is 1995. Plus, of course, more data. Blah, 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 blah. That's amazing. This bit here. That is really, really amazing. Okay. So, any more articles? Let's have a quick look. I uh, know we want to go on to the next generation of the code. Um, um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything else there that looks particularly exciting. Sussex Minimal Lapidary Society. Just little... Um, uh, advertisement for the for the club which I'm still a member of right okay so um, that is Mindat 32 but there was a new and a, a rewrite of this before you got to the point of doing what I suggested back then and converting it into a um, a, a web server um, I did something else which was um, when I decided temporarily at least to ditch the Mindat name and that was Mineral Explorer. Shall we see if we can get that working? Maybe I'll try a more exciting operating system than Windows NT4 for that. And we're into Windows 2000 Professional so that we can try the final software based computer, uh, standalone software based um, Mindat product which came with the extremely boring name of Mineral Explorer. Now this was at the time you had Win Internet Explorer and whatever Explorer, everything was an Explorer of some kind, so it seemed sense to rebrand Mindat to Mineral Explorer. <clears throat> now um, this probably did work in um, Windows NT but I can't get Windows NT to show up in higher resolution 
So I've gone for Windows 2000 and um, on my virtual box emulator here and it seems to work quite nicely. Anyway, look at the nice icon. Right, welcome to Mini Explorer. This looks very similar to before, except now it's 1997 rather than 1996, which was the previous version. Okay, tip of the day. Welcome to Mini Explorer 97. Hey, and we actually have quite a nice toolbar for all for a change. And yeah, I think I did design that myself. I obviously just spent a little bit more time and effort doing it. Um, although notice we've got the trimmed off version of the logo crystal here, which we'd never had used anywhere else. Mineral Explorer 97. Yes, terrible name. Right, what can we do with it? Well, um, all similar before, let's find a mineral. Let's go to calcite. Um, calcite is one of the most common minerals on the Earth's surface. Yes, 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 yes. So we have descriptions, we've got more text, we've got more, actually not an awful lot more data, to be honest, um, and more localities than before, I think we can say. Yes, there's quite a lot here. Um, but one thing else that's new is we have an images icon. Click on that and we've got one, two, three, four, five, count them, five different photos of calcite. Now, how many more would you possibly want than that? So I can click on one of these and hopefully, hey, look at that, fantastic. Actually, I just want to show you something relating to that. Let's go back to um, Adamite. And we choose Adamite because actually there's quite a lot of information on that one. Um, Adamite is the first mineral alphabetically that we got photos for. Uh, so click on this photo. Now, behold that fantastic photo. And look at this. Switching over now to 2022 um, Google Chrome and into Mindat and let's do a search for photo one. Yes, this is photo number one on Mindat. Exciting, huh? All right, okay, now let's get back to um, the year 1997. Um, and Windows 2000, which wasn't actually all launched at the time, but as I said, it was the best way we could get this to work. So we have um, minimal pages, which are quite nice. Now, the interesting thing about this, compared to the previous version, the previous version generated content using um, a rich text system, and this used the Internet Explorer control. Um, which was important because it meant that we could now um, generate HTML content internally, which was the first step towards us thinking, hey, let's put this onto the onto a website. Now, I don't know if that still meant, yep, all the linking still works there. Still can't link for a locality. What if I select a locality? No, that doesn't work. But let's do, let's go to the browser. All of this is the same except it doesn't work. Yeah, this all looks the same as before. Um, we have an images directory this time that works. So, Stib Night. I say it works, you can't seem to click on them from here. But anyway, um, and but the other thing that's quite good on this, I can edit this. And this now gives me an edit form for editing in the information here. Um, or we can edit the locality data and we can add a new locality to it. So um, it's actually had a, a more effective editing tool than previously. And remember the original version, I had to just edit the uh, text files by hand pretty much. Um, let's go to a locality, let's go to Sumeb. That just gives us the list of minerals, which is not well, actually, we don't really get this. Is actually, this is the point. We don't have 
any information about localities in this system other than what minerals are there. There's no descriptions, there's no maps, obviously, because this is like the last century. Um, there's no coordinates, there's nothing. Um, all we have is just the name of the locality and the list of minerals. The one thing that we have inherited is the hierarchical structure. Now obviously we've improved on it since then, but the ability that we have this flexible hierarchical structure, we don't have as many databases at the time had where you have to fill in a country field, then a state or, or, or county, then a then a town or, or whatever. So you have we don't have that divided up. So if we have a mine all we know is that the mine name is somewhere in Namibia. We just have the mine comma Namibia. Um, as is this one, for example. Um, so that was quite a smart move to do that because it, it allowed us to build the flexibility that we needed moving forward from Minda. Um, OK, so look at this locality list. We've actually got things in bold, which are where this is the type locality. Um, we have things which are not IMA approved in apostrophes and italics. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely an improvement on the uh, uh, previous version, and the other thing we could do if let's go back to I don't know dolomite uh, because why not? Um, I think we can have forward and backwards buttons. Yes, so you can go quickly through all the minerals, and again because you can see the logo flashing up very quickly there, um, because obviously it's all local. And it's not having to load in pages off the web. This is quite rapid. So that's quite nice. But uh, um, yeah, that would be take a lot longer doing that on the web. So the other nice thing that this has, the periodic table of the elements. Now, this was obviously something we've had in Mindat for quite some time, but this was a really powerful thing at all for us to have in this version of the software back in um, 1997. I've just noticed it's still called Mindat 32 up on the title bar. Anyway, so again, we can say, show me all the minerals that have got iron, silicon, but no oxygen. It's actually there is, and list minerals. Yeah, da, 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 and it works. So obviously we have the same coding um, on Mindat now, um, but this is where it originated from. Let's see what else we've got here. Options. There's options seem to be optional. They're not actually working. Uh, anything up here that's interesting? Um, no, not really. No, that's all pretty boring. Um, I think we've still got articles, except for whatever reason that's not working. Never mind. But uh, yeah, Mineral Explorer 97 people. Well, thank you for staying with me through all of these adventures in time. Um, now um, we're going to look at the beginning of the website. now. The website was launched in October, October the 10th, 2000. Um, and I'm not going to set up web servers or do anything crazy like that to show you what it used to look like because I don't need to because we have the incredibly fantastic Wayback Machine from the Internet Archive, um, which has been, um, as you can see, busily indexing mindat.org other than the year 2009 where it took a break um, since 2001 so March the 2nd 2001 was the very first um, time that it did an indexing of mindat so about six months after it was launched so this is the the earliest recorded version of mindat that we have available to us and this is what it looked like with the hideous colours and, um, and hideous design sense. Um, in fact, it was designed to work on an 800 by 600 screen. Um, this is at 1024 by 768, which is still 
quite small. If I put it on a mod modern wide screen, it looks ridiculous. But anyway, this is how it looks. Let's close the Wayback Machine menu for the moment. And let's have a look. What have we got here? Mindad Dog is probably the largest monological reference on the internet. And, you know, it was true then, and it's certainly true now. Um, it was it built up pretty rapidly now um, it's currently there are 7611 different minerals um, and 18,000 occurrences now if you remember us it was 10,000 that I added myself and so in six months we've only added another 80 another 8,000 and as you can see we're starting to add photos now Let's click on one of these. You want to see what a photo looked like on Mindat? Yeah, this is how photo pages used to look on Mindat. Um, and um, I don't think that will work. That's a shame because this was quite cool. Um, but let's try it anyway, see if it does anything. Oh, it does. Now, this is something very cool. <clears throat> we don't have it anymore because it stopped working. But there was a, a image um, comparison, um, a similarity algorithm uh, that we were doing a beta test of, and it worked pretty well considering that we had a very limited data set. The only problem was that um, it kind of focused on the fact that these John Betts photos, and I must shout out for John Betts, give him a great thank you for allowing us to use photos at this very early stage you know this is way before any, anybody really knew what Mindat was um, I asked him if he, we could use his photos and he was happy very happy for us to do so so a lot of the early photos on Mindat are are from John Betts and uh, John Betts and also John Vivert uh, who's sadly no longer with us um, he also um, uh, allowed us to use his photos as well in the past so the two Johns were um, really um, the cornerstone of the early uh, photo library on Mindat but his photo John Betts's photos always have this sort of color glow behind them and I think the system is kind of picking up more of the the fact that the image the photo the specimens have a low saturation and it's got this colored glow around them so I don't know how well it would actually work with a modern database, but yeah, well, something we'll work on in the future. Anyway, um, but also this is it's jumped to 2007 now. You can see the menus have changed. Let's go back to the um, 2001 page. So obviously, what well the problem here with with archive.org is that they probably index the home page, but not all of the internal page. So I don't know, for example, if we click on news, what do we get? Oh, December. So Mindat News. More on those fake silvers. Okay, yes. So I was, this was before we had an uh, article system on Mindat. So I would just post sort of news items up like this. So there was a big controversy about the Himmel's first silvers. Um, whether they were faked or not uh, long story short is that there was a lot of money involved so a lot of people were under a lot of pressure to keep quiet and I shall say no more <laughs> and there we go um, so as you can see we launched we actually launched on the 10th so first public reactions came in on the 13th of October 2000 um, and better formula display 15th of, of October I've rewritten the formula code to support Netscape 4.5 now that's pretty good um, and and this was also when I added it so it could support the um, oxidization uh, values as well in the formula before that it couldn't uh, so by the 17th we had David Barthelme at webminor.com of course um, cross-linking with us um, and then um, 
da, 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 da. Uh, by the 26th of October, other people could start editing information. Da, 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 da. Uh, what else? Um, yeah. So John Betts uh, gave me permission to use his photos at the beginning of November. So only a m less than a month after we launched, John Betts gave us permission to use the photos. That was fantastic. Thank you, John. Anyway, all of that is there. You could probably find it. I wonder if that, that URL may still work. I, I tend not to delete old URLs. They kind of just get lost and they disappear off menus, but the pages still exist. So we'll have, have a look for that later and see if it works. What else do we got? What have we got here? We're still in 2001 event list. Oh, an event list. Well, anyway, that's surprising, isn't it? Um, and, you know, it would be, I didn't actually get to the Tucson show until 2006 was the first time I went to Tucson. Uh, Munich show, first time I went to Munich was 2005. So it's still, you know, I was, I was basically living on my, you know, little, my uh, little bubble in the UK, uh, occasionally going to UK mineral shows, meeting up with UK people, but having no international interaction other than electronically. Let's go back to our home page um, site hosted and developed by mysterious ways now that was my web development company that I started in 2000 and was running until 2007 um, and then I, I finally gave up on that uh, but the idea was that was my day job developing websites for other people um, and that kind of failed mostly because I was spending most of my time doing Mindat um, Ugly as anything, let's try jumping forward a few years. 2002. Does it even work? Yep. Yeah. So 2002, looking a little bit cleaner. We won the best site award for 2001 for the minerals, by the visitors to mineralcollecting.org. Right. Uh, and things got rearranged still, the hideous pastel colours. Um, 2003 rearranged it again made the searches more prominent photos a little bit bigger still hideous pastel colors 2004 ah now this was where we started to take more um, use of screen space because generally nobody used 800 by 600 screens anymore by this time so now 1024 768 was the um, the resolution um, of by default and now we've got a few things that are important um, we've got um, banners um, still got my company it's still working at that time uh, menus with hideous over highlight colors and um, yeah all the colors I kind of just chose at random and it shows okay 2005 what happened then is exactly the same 2006 we shift over to a system with just a single um, column uh, but importantly we have photo of the day now obviously it's a little bit broken because archive.org couldn't be bothered to store the image when it did the scan um, but I'm also got a less exciting mysterious ways logo now um, and still all of these horrible um, pastel colours. Um, let's jump forward. I'll just keep jumping forward until I see something that is vaguely interesting. Yeah, mostly the same, mostly the same. 2008. All the same, the same, the same. 2009 or 2010 actually still still more or less the same We've changed a few colors um, yeah 2011 you get the idea here we kind of got sort of stuck on this layout for quite some time 2012 2013 
I could edit these delays out in the video editor, but I'm not going to. You'll just have to put up with them like I am. 2014. Makes the video look longer anyway, which I'm sure is a better metric or something or other for YouTube. 2015. Oh, we've got some different size banners at the top now. JTV Jewelry Television. There's a big story about that, which I'm not going to tell. Um, okay, 2015, we have a redesign. We have even have a new logo. Um, and there's a whole article on Mindat somewhere about the history of the Mindat logo, which is really quite fun. Um, I'm not going to go into that again because you know, I can't really add any more to it in a video that isn't already in the article. Um, but yeah, this is starting to look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Uh, and 2016. Dun, 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 dun. Same. 2017, 15 years that it's been online. So we're rushing through time like nothing at the moment. Now the pages are a little bit messed up because I'm I'm actually clicking going to the next one before it's even finished loading the previous one because I've got no patience whatsoever. Uh, and of course because archive.org hasn't I indexed everything. See, photos of the day is still quite tiny. In fact, it's smaller now than it used to be in the previous version of the um, design. And then finally, we get to 2018 and we get the design that we've had now for the last four years, which is probably going to stay more or less the same as it is for a while because we quite like it with the um, the large photo of the day which I really think works well um, and these all these sections here the idea with these sections here is to give more emphasis for people who are new to the site to try and explain what we do rather than the previous site designs which are just like lists of new things on the site which is kind of useful for new for re for returning visitors but was a kind of a confusion for uh, for anyone new to the site. Anyway, I think that there's not much point showing this because that's what you can see already on Mindat today. So I think on that I'm going to call it quits. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, there is some more information in the article as well which you should read up about including some rather amusing messages from um, people who uh, responded after I launched the site um, and the history of, of, of the interactions on that and, and various other things that happened and many other things which I've completely forgotten about while I was doing this video. So go and have a look at that article. Remember just go to about on the menu here and about history of Mindat. There we go, that's the one. I, think I almost forgot it myself. About history of Mindat, click that, read that, be happy and uh, enjoy. And I look forward to seeing you. Well, I won't see you because I'm kind of on a video editor um, and you're behind a computer. But I look forward to you seeing me, or hearing me at least, in the next one of these rock stories, which I will probably do at some point in the not-too-distant future. Thank you and goodbye.